Well, hello everybody and welcome to another episode. There were lots of different types of film cameras produced and it can be quite a daunting task trying to select your first one. So today we're going to do a thorough look at lots of different types of film camera. We're going to look at film point and shoots. We're going to look at 110 film cameras. We're going to look at rangefinders, simple SLRs, fancy SLRs to help you navigate your way through the world of film cameras and help you find one that suits you. So let's begin with a nice, simple, very accessible uh, kind of camera, the point and shoot, the 35 millimeter point and shoot. And the first one we're going to look at is this one. This is the Olympus MJU-1. And as I understand it, this camera was made from around about the 1980s, the early 80s. It kind of took up where the Trip 35 left off and it's a little bit more of an advanced camera. And it's a smaller camera as well and that's one of the great advantages of this camera is it's really small. Just have a look at it here. Here's the little Olympus and this is a beautiful little camera. It's an entirely auto camera. It's got this clamshell design. This being the MJU-1 has a, I think it's a 35mm, yeah, 35mm f3.5 lens. Um, it's a nice lens, it's quite sharp, it's a little bit slow, but then you can't win them all. The MJU-2 that came later is an f2.8 lens. It's all automatic, it operates by one battery, it has a built-in flash, it's auto-focus, it's auto-exposure. This is a very, very, very nice little camera. It's got minimal controls. You don't really have any control over it as a photographer, but it's not that kind of camera. This is a fun, take-anywhere, go-anywhere kind of camera, and it's the kind of equivalent of uh, a phone camera. It's a sort of an 80s equivalent of a phone camera, really. Um, that's the sort of approach it is. Take anywhere, go anywhere camera. Very nice little piece of kit. MJU-1 available for about £75. MJU-2 has got a bit silly. Um, most, of the, uh, most of the other MJU cameras have zoom lenses and they go for around about £75 to £80 also. Great little bits of kit. We looked recently at the Olympus Trip 35, but there's no harm in mention it, uh, mentioning it again. This is a really nice camera, um, a point and shoot, auto exposure. It has zone focusing. There's a, a, a look at it. It's a very nicely made thing. It's all metal. It has the classic camera look. And I've just realized we're rather overexposed. This is very, very tricky light today. That's a little better. So it's got that classic camera look, it's all metal, it's auto exposure, uh, it doesn't have a built in flash, it's not quite that advanced, but it does make some very nice images. The only concession to the old days of manualness are the, is the manual focus mechanism, but that's nice and easy too, because it's a, a very simple, oh this light is dreadful, it's a very simple um, zone focusing affair, so very very easy to operate a very very nice little camera available for around about 60 to 100 pounds thereabouts now here is a stunning little point and shoot a tiny little point and shoot this is the roly a110 this camera is not a 35 mil camera this is a 110 cartridge film camera um, 110 cartridges are actually quite small and the film is very small and the actual image size is as I understand it roughly around the same size as a micro four-thirds sensor and these were used well not this particular camera necessarily but 110 film cameras were used by everybody the world over Kodak Instamatics I believe it was a Kodak format, sold in their millions, possibly tens of millions, I really don't know. There were many, 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 many sold. 
This is one of the really nice ones. Made by Rowley. Let's have a look. Made by Rowley, first in Germany, later in Singapore. It's a beautiful little thing. Look, it'll open up like this. Shutter button on top here. It's all automatic exposure. It's a beautiful little thing. The It's an all metal camera and the metal finish is not black paint on as, as it looks, but it's actually black chrome. This is a really, really high quality camera. And this was the really the absolute top end or one of the top end cameras for the 110 format. It's auto exposure. It's got an f2.8 Tessar lens, so it's got a really nice lens. It does have zone focusing. And as I recall, there are little symbols in the viewfinder. Yes, there are. There are symbols in the viewfinder for your focus. The focus control is here. And you just move, whoops, you just move it with your finger from side to side. You'll see the lens rotate there as I'm moving the control. Uh, there are frame lines in the viewfinder. This is a very, very nice little camera. It takes standard 110 cartridges. They cost around about, I've seen these go for as little as £30. And they're just lovely. They're just absolutely delightful little things. You can stick them in a pocket. You can take them with you wherever you want to go. Just beautiful. Now the camera I learned photography on was a rangefinder camera. So I do like rangefinders and they're a very nice introduction to 35mm film. Um, they're very small, they're portable, they're silent, they're great for street photography. Uh, and if you uh, get a collapsible lens on one of them, you can put one in your pocket nice and easy. Let's begin with Two of my favourite rangefinders, or is it one rangefinder? They're really the same rangefinder, and it's the Leica rangefinder, the Barnack Leica rangefinder. These are very, very nice cameras, extremely high quality, hundreds, possibly thousands of lenses available for them in the M39 screw mount, or L39 screw mount, I should say. Really, really beautiful things. Let me demonstrate with this Leica 2 here. This is from 1932. It's very, very simple. It's all manual. You've got a wind knob, a shutter release, a control to set the shutter speed, a control to set the aperture, uh, which is here on this one and a focusing mechanism and that's it that's all you get with these cameras they're very 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 simple but very 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 high quality also this camera uh, or any of these little rangefinders will make pictures equal to any film camera ever made just because they're old just because they're simple doesn't mean they don't make good images these make utterly fantastic images you can buy a Leica rangefinder like this with a lens for about three to four hundred pounds. However, if you can't stretch to that, there is an ideal and very, very nice alternative in the Russian made Zorki one and Fed one rangefinders, identical copies almost of the Leica two. Very, very nice lenses. You can see here that it's actually pretty much almost the same thing. The design is the same, the look is the same, the controls are the same, the mechanism is almost exactly the same. Uh, and for all intents and purposes, this camera is indistinguishable in use and almost indistinguishable in appearance from the much more expensive German Leica original. So this is a really good way into rangefinder photography. Lovely little cameras and I still like them. Other possibles would be the Zorki 3. And this is a lovely camera, beautiful piece of industrial design, very, very high quality. And it's still got the slow speed dial on the front there. 
Uh, it's a development of the Leica design, uh, but you can see that it's got lots of Leica DNA um, and it's still got this slow speed on the front there, uh, just like the original Leica. A very beautiful piece of kit. Unfortunately, not the cheapest. These go for around about £150. They're fairly rare, but don't despair because there is an alternative in the uh, Russian-made former Soviet Union Zorki 4 camera. This is a beautiful camera. A very nice piece of industrial design. Uh, a lever wind as well, so really easy to use. Shutter speeds from one second to one thousandth. Full range of shutter speeds. It will accept all of the L39 lenses. Leica, Canon, Reed, Nikon, you name it, plus all the Soviet manufacturers. Here it is in its full glory and I just find it a really nice piece of design. I think it's a fantastic looking camera. It's nice and easy, uh, easy to use with the lever wind, much easier than the Zorki 4 which has a knob wind here and because of the position of this uh, ridge it makes it can make it difficult to wind. So much easier winding with the Zorki 4, uh, K rather. Very, very nice. A good copy of this camera will cost from between 40 to 60 pounds. Uh, it will come at that price with a Jupiter 850mm f2 lens, a beautiful lens and genuinely beautiful lens. Really, really nice images. Well worth considering as your first 35mm rangefinder. We can't talk about 35mm film cameras without considering SLRs. So let's look at some budget, affordable SLRs, but which nevertheless will give you, as a photographer, complete control over your image. And the first one I'm going to look at is the Practica here. This is a Practica PM3, and it's unfortunately without a lens. Let's put a lens on it. So there's the Practica PM3 now wearing uh, this lovely Helios 44 58mm f2 lens. This is a really nice camera. These were made in the millions in the old East Germany and they're a fully specced SLR. They're manual, so there's a light meter in this camera. It will tell you the light reading, but you then have to transfer those readings yourself onto the shutter speed control here and the aperture control on your lens. So this is not a camera that will do anything automatically for you and it's all the better for that. I think manual cameras are great to learn with. This is, let's have a look at it, it's a handsome looking beast. It looks like an SLR, it's got the classic look. It's got very clean lines, it's very much a 70s looking camera and it's a very nice thing in my opinion. It's got a lever wind here so it's nice and easy to use. The shutter button unusually is on the front here, but that's actually a really handy position to have it. It really works nicely on the front there. These practicas have a metal shutter. They are well made and they have an M42 lens mount and there were hundreds of thousands of different types of M42 lenses made both from the major manufacturers and third-party manufacturers. You'll never go short of lenses if you buy an M42 camera uh, and some of them are really cheap as well and of really really nice quality so this is a great uh, choice as a first uh, film SLR. They cost around about £20. You'll often get them for that price with a Carl Zeiss Jenner Tessar 50mm, a very nice lens. Well worth looking out for one of these. Other cheap SLRs worth an honourable mention? Well, we've got the Chinon CE4. This is a K-mount camera, a very nice camera. I looked at this in a recent episode, so I won't go on too much about it here. This is an auto exposure camera. K-mount lenses, again, there are hundreds and hundreds of them available, often quite cheap. So that, again, is a very versatile camera. Another camera that deserves an honourable mention 
is this one, the Vivitar V3000. This is a game out camera, fully manual, no electronics, made right up until 2005, so you can still find relatively new um, examples of this camera, and it's a great camera for starting. It's got everything you need and nothing you don't. It's a very, very nice little piece of kit. Indeed, these will go for around about 20 to 30 pounds. There are a lot of very cheap SLRs that you can buy. Generally speaking, if you're buying a cheap SLR, go for a K mount, uh, uh, one with a K, uh, K lens mount or one with an M42 lens mount. And then you've got a vast choice of lenses available pretty cheaply. Finally then, let's have a look at some of the nicest SLRs you can get. These do tend to be a bit more expensive, but they are nicer machines. And we'll begin with this one. This is a camera I've not used for quite a while, but every time I use it, I'm reminded what a fine, fine machine this is. This is one of the finest cameras you can buy. This is a Nikon FM. There is also a Nikon FE which has aperture priority auto exposure but this one the FM is all manual and it's better for it. It's all the better for it. It's a beautiful beautiful machine. It's beautifully made. Let's have a look. This one is currently wearing the 85mm f2 lens from Nikon and that's just such a beautiful optic. Some of the finest lenses you can get are made by Nikon and this camera shoots them all beautifully. It's very, very nicely made. It's simple. There's nothing more than exactly what you need, which is shutter speed control, aperture control at the back of the lens on Nikon's, I'm forgetting, and focus and that's pretty much all there is but you can buy one of these cameras now and if you buy a good one now this camera will last you uh, literally as long as you want it this camera will last a lifetime with regular servicing which really any old machine any machine at all whether old or new needs but with regular servicing with care and attention this camera will last and last and last. It's the equivalent in quality of any Leica, any Olympus, any Canon. It's just such a beautifully made machine. Everywhere, uh, everything rather is conventional. The controls are all in the conventional places. Shutter speed is on the top deck here. Apertures on the lens. Film wind is on a lever and when you pull that out to its first position then the um, camera is switched on. On the earlier FMs it was, uh, I think there was an actual switch somewhere and conventional wind on of the camera. Just a beautiful, beautiful machine. One of my favourite cameras. Uh, really, really nice. and. Oh my gosh, now we've got a monsoon. Gosh, there we are. That's the weather for you. And so the other sort of upper tier SLR I'm going to show you today is this one. As regular viewers of the channel will know, I'm a big fan of the Olympus OM cameras. They're just delightful. They're small. They're beautifully made. This is an OM2. So I think on balance, this is my favourite of all the OM cameras. Uh, it has a manual setting and it also has aperture priority auto exposure, which means that uh, you can go to auto if you want, which personally I do like to do from time to time. Um, let's have a look at the camera. These are exquisite little machines. They're little jewels. They're slightly differently laid out to uh, many other film SLRs. Film winds in the in the conventional place, as is the shutter release. Um, the film speed, sorry, the shutter speed dial is actually on the concentric ring there that you can see turning next to the lens mount. Uh, aperture control at the front of the lens on these 
I grew up with Russian rangefinders and Russian lenses, and they were all front aperture dial, so that's a natural position for me. It's an all electronic camera, there's uh, not too many manual bits in here, um, and it's just beautiful. One of the great things about these Olympus OMs is that they're so tiny, they really are small, they're, they're not much bigger than the Barnack like as we looked at first of all. Um, these are not the cheapest SLRs but they're by no means the most expensive film cameras and they're actually brilliant value for what they are. A good one of these with a lens probably a 1.850mm will cost you about £150 as will the Nikon FM that we just looked at. These cameras are well worth the extra and if you want an um, a film camera, film SLR that will last you as literally as long as you want it to, this is it. So there we are, another roundup of beautiful little film cameras, all of which are available to buy, some of which are really, really cheap, and even the most expensive of which are fantastic value because they will last you as long as you want. It's the end of the year and it's been quite a year for the channel and I'm very very pleased with the way it's going and the way it's growing and developing. I'd like to thank everybody who has lent me equipment. Alan at work, uh, my good friend at work has lent me loads of Olympus gear and loads of other bits. Uh, Derek Holmes has sent in lenses, uh, Sebastian Heuser has sent in lenses, uh, all the people who uh, asked not to be named have sent in lenses and many, many thanks to everybody who's sent in stuff for me to review and look at and bring to you the wider community um, to uh, look at and enjoy as well. Thank you so much to everybody who has tuned in, who has subscribed, who's rung the bell and done all the other YouTube type stuff that helps with uh, channel's growth and development. That is absolutely fantastic. Thank you also to all the patrons who have put their money where their mouths are and decided that this channel is something worth helping to grow and develop. And many, many thanks to uh, everybody who's become a patron this year. So that's it from me for now. Please don't forget to like subscribe and ring that bell before you go and if you like the content on this channel and if you'd like to help it grow and develop you can do that at patreon.com forward slash xenography as ever thank you very much for watching and i will see you next time for some more xenography